So again, we're hopping around a little bit from lesson to lesson. This is going to be our final lesson that is developing this toolkit that will carry throughout the rest of the course. This is on the instruments we use to actually detect the light. So the first two, we kind of got into the solar system a little bit, basic motions, sun, earth, moon, planets, history. But before we get into the more detailed modern stuff, we did a whole lesson on the nature of light and how we can use the properties of light to learn things physically. But then we actually have to measure the light. And so this is going to be the instrumentation side of it, uh, the telescope side of it. So we're going to be learning about telescopes. We're going to be learning about detectors. Uh, we'll do optical telescopes. We'll do radio telescopes. We'll do space-based observatories to catch all the other wavelengths that don't make it through the atmosphere. So there's a lot of different things we'll do here, but it's all kind of telescopes. And we'll start with regular visible light telescopes. We sometimes call them visible light telescopes. Sometimes call them optical telescopes. And we'll start with that. So that's what most people are familiar with. And there are two types of optical telescopes. We have the reflectors and we have the refractors. Let's put those two terms there. The two words are similar, so it's easy to get them backwards. I might mess it up once or twice, I'll try not to. But a reflector is pretty descriptive. You're reflecting. So this telescope makes use of a mirror. Anyone want to guess what a refractor uses? A lens, yeah. When light goes through a lens, it, such as this one right here, well this really isn't a lens, but it's a piece of glass. You can cut the lens out of it. Uh, it refracts the light. That's something we'll talk about very shortly. So we call them refractors. Here's your basic reflecting uh, telescope setup. You have the light coming in from the left. We can assume that the light is coming in in parallel rays. So why am I allowed to assume that? Okay, so you're saying it's coming in from a single point. So uh, let's say here I'll, I'll draw it right here. Here's uh, my mirror, a parabolic mirror. Let's say my single point of light is right here. Uh, maybe it's a light bulb or something. Yeah, the light coming here is not coming in plane parallel. Those rays are have angles between them. They're not uh, coming in uniform. So what do I have to do with that point of light to make this assumption? Far away, that's right. If it's nearby, they're not playing parallel. If I move it farther away, we get closer to parallel lines, farther away again. So these last lines I just drew are, they're still not perfectly parallel, but they're, that's much closer parallel than these lines were. Uh, the diagram's getting confusing at this point, but I think you get the idea. Everything we're looking at astronomically is so far away, we can make the assumption that the rays coming in are almost perfectly parallel. And all the light is coming in in plain parallel rays, and that's a safe approximation to use for astronomical objects, because the source is so far away, we're not observing this ray of light and this ray of light, but rather two rays of light that were emitted very close to parallel, and then to both make it into our telescope, you know, light years away possibly, possibly billions of light years away. So you can approximate them to be parallel, and the perfect shape for reflecting parallel rays to a common focus is a parabola. And so the shape of the mirror is actually the bottom of a parabola. You might not see it because it's only the very, very bottom piece. You might remember the shape of a parabola from geometry. It looks something like this. Imagine taking just this little piece right here and turning that into your mirror. And that's what we do, at least with the professional scopes. Amateur scopes is a shortcut that we'll get to. OK, now that's fine if you're looking at just a point, like a distant star. But often we look at extended objects. So this gives you an idea a little bit about how the telescope works. Suppose we're looking at a comet. It's extended. And we take our telescope and we point it to the middle of the comet. Light coming from that middle, coming through space, coming through the solar system at us, 
corresponds to this green ray coming on the main axis of the telescope, just like you saw in the previous diagram. Bounces off here, comes to the focus. Uh, the rays over here bounces off here, comes to the focus. So all light coming from the middle of the comet, or at least where the telescope is pointed on the main axis, will focus to this point here. But the head of the comet is higher than where the telescope is pointed. The telescope is pointing right at this spot right here. This light's coming in from above. So that's kind of the orange ray. So if you come in at an angle, you bounce off this, it will come out. This is a wider angle. It's kind of like if you're bouncing a ball or playing two square in elementary school or something with the dodgeball. Uh, if you come in at a lower angle, it's going to come out at a lower angle. Come in at an acute angle, it's going to come back off at a very sharp angle. Here we're bouncing off at a kind of more oblique angle, and so it comes out at a more oblique angle, coming over in this direction, but on this side, it's a narrow angle. You come in and you bounce off, and so the head of the comet will actually focus down here. The very bottom of the tail of the comet, this light's coming in from below, so it's going to bounce off this way and focus up over here. The light from the tail is coming in sharp here, focuses there. And it all focuses, it just focuses to different points. The light coming from above, like the head of the comet, will focus down below. Uh, light from the tail of the comet down below will focus above, giving you an inverted image in focus at that distance. And we call that the focal distance. Maybe I should put some terms here. Actually, I think it's on the uh, previous slide. The distance from the mirror to here is called the focal length or focal distance, we call it focal length. And this perpendicular plane, we call that the focal plane. That's where light rays will be in focus. If you stick your detector here, everything will be out of focus. If you stick your detector back here, everything will be out of focus. There's just one certain distance, it's the focal distance, the focal length, where you can stick your detector and everything's in focus. Now, in reality, that might be a curved surface where everything's in focus, but still, it's a, it's a two-dimensional surface where everything's in focus. You stick your detector on that surface, and you'll have a focused image. <laughs> oh, question. Uh, so the question is, since you always need a detector around the focal point, is there always a blind spot? We'll go into all sorts of different telescope designs, but essentially you've got to get that focal point you either stick your detector there or you stick a mirror there and send the light out to your detector. But there's always going to be a spot. It's not really a blind spot, though. You're blocking some of the light, but you're still getting light from that point coming in all the other directions. Here, let me draw it. So, let's say you have some extended object and you're considering the light just from this point. Light from that point is radiating out in all sorts of different directions. We take this liver here. It's going into our telescope. So here's our telescope, the primary mirror here, and it's going to focus it here. And so, yeah, if I stick a detector right here, it does block some of that light, light that was going straight in. But I'm still getting the light from the exact same spot. So it's not like a blind spot where I can't see this part of whatever object. I still get light from that coming in on other sides that I can focus there. It just decreases the amount of intensity. Okay, so that's your basic reflector. We'll come back because there are all sorts of variations in reflector designs for different applications. Questions about reflectors?